From the very cheap to the really expensive stuff, I'm gonna show you what exactly is inside your plywood. So to help me do this, I'm gonna head over to a friend of mine's shop. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's check this out. Let's go. So here we are in my buddy's shop. Excuse me, you can't what? do that here. What, why? You can't do this here. Well, that was a short trip. So with the help of this Avid CNC, we're gonna skim down a 16th of an inch on all these layers, and honestly, the results have been a little crazy so far. So let's go on this journey together. I'm gonna show you what's inside some of this stuff, and yes, by the thumbnail, this was in some of the plywood, and yeah, it wasn't the cheapest stuff either, so this is gonna be fun. So I need to tell you, there's a massive giveaway at the end of this video. This is a clamp holder I put on the wall. I sell these. I'm giving away seven of them. I have made a bunch out of all the testing that we've done. These are going to be available to one lucky viewer. All you got to do is just drop a comment down below. That's it. And I'll pick one at random or probably my daughter will. <laughs> and then we'll send them to you. So yeah, this is, we'll hold you about 40 different clamps on the wall. So enter. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what these plywoods are, where they come from, where they're imported from, if I know, and the species that they are, if I know. So some things you just don't know, but here we go. We're going to dive into the cheapest to the most expensive. All right. The first one is going to be imported from Vietnam. I got this from a local lumber dealer here, by the way, I'm going to list all the lumber dealers in Northeast Florida down below. If you want from Florida Southern to hood to whoever, uh, definitely go check them out. If you're in this area, um, they have some pretty cool stuff. So this is from Vietnam and it looks pretty okay. I guess two massively thin veneers. Again, I'm going to put a close up of a cross section of the wood uh, when I talk about these so you can see the, uh, the, veneer, the, the layers inside, but this stuff looks just okay. I mean, at whatever the price was, again, they're going to flash on the screen too. This seems pretty eh, mediocre. <laughs> the next one is going to be, well, what I think might be the dark horse in, well, I don't know if this is a competition, but I think this is going to be a pretty good one. This one is imported from Brazil. Um, it has multiple layers. Uh, it's not quite the level of Baltic, but it looks pretty good, pretty lightweight. Uh, I'm pretty hopeful of this one, and I do know that this one is birch and magnolia. Third, we're going to talk about ones from Home Depot now. These are not from a lumber dealer. These are from your big box store. This is sandy ply. You may have heard of it, or sandy ply, whatever you want to call it. Um, the plies are fairly thick. Again, five main plies, two very thin veneers. You can blow through those with probably a fingernail. Um, again, standard cheap plywood. Next, again from Home Depot, this is much heavier, my goodness. Uh, this is what people, when people say, I got me some Baltic birch from Home Depot, they did not because they don't sell it. They probably got this stuff. This is birch ply. Um, it feels heavy, it feels good. It has the worst voids of, of any of the ones that I'm testing right now at this stage, just making simple cuts and it's a little wonky, but it feels heavy, and, but it was a little bit of a bend to it. Next, the one I'm really excited about. Um, if I ever did come up with a different alternative uh, from getting, you know, faulty birch plywood, it would be this. This is tiger ply. This comes out of Indonesia, I believe. The layers inside, don't know. Um, I don't seem to think, I don't even think they know. <laughs> but this is really cool. Like I said, the cross section you can see here, there is a ton of layers in this. This is the most like Baltic I've ever seen. Um, and it's pretty pricey too. It's up there with the Baltic. But if I was going to find an alternative, this is probably it. Now, moving on to what I use today. This is Baltic birch plywood. Um, I get this from a local dealer here. And honestly, it's amazing. Like I said, I put all the dealers down there, check them out. This stuff is available in some areas of the country and some it's not, but we're gonna find out what's in here and see if it's all that good. And then this is Baltic birch as well. This is from a five by five piece of three quarter inch, which I can't get anymore. I haven't gotten this stuff since 2018. The reason I'm even testing this is because I want to see the layers of this seem very pale and white compared to the other ones. Um, it looks pretty, uh, pretty pristine, honestly. Um, this was a pretty penny back in the day, but I still have a few pieces and why not? Let's test it out. So I've got all these pieces of plywood cut down to two by four foot sections and we're going to staple them or nail them down to the CNC board with, yeah, plastic nails. These are composite nails and they are awesome and even better if you put them in the right way, they actually fit into the nail gun and yeah, we're good to go. The beauty of these is that you don't have to worry about any type of router bit getting damaged 
when it clips into a metal nail. Pretty awesome stuff, and here's how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna put four nails at the corners and then probably one at the top and bottom. And I'm going into V-Carve here and I don't like this first initial pass. So let's redesign a different section here to skim away more material and give us a bit more of a reveal. I think this is gonna work. And my CNC is being way inappropriate. So yeah, sorry about that. But I'm gonna let you just sit back and watch this process as these router bits, or this router bit, just kind of skims away a 16th of an inch at a time. And then I'll go over what we found and we'll talk about the results. So this has been pretty wild to see this so far. Not only did I find some black adhesive between the layers on one of these, I noticed some type of like fibrous material. And as it was cutting even further, I found another what looked to be a like piece of cotton. Like you see it right here. And as this bit goes a little further out of the way, I decided to go ahead and grab this cotton like material and pull it. And to my surprise, it just starts pulling up and up and the wood fibers come with it. Now I don't really have an explanation for this. As far as I can tell, this is probably in there for rigidity or strength or something like kind of like fiberglass would be in concrete. But I don't know if you have any thoughts about these nylon fibers being inside this wood, please let me know. All right, with the skim test done, another test I wanted to do was to cut out some of the things I make. And these have a lot of curved surface, a lot of angled surfaces as well. This was a good example. And yes, I am cutting these out with a quarter inch bit and there are no tabs in there. I've just kind of dialed it in. Plus, it's a really high quality router bit. I actually sell these, these are my own bits. And I'm working with a manufacturer to bring you more and more as time goes on. But they're gonna be down below in the website description or in this video's description. So go check it out if you want really high quality router bits for your CNC. So after cutting all these out, I've put them in sections and I'm going to weigh them because I feel just there's a huge discrepancy between some of the really higher quality stuff and some of the inexpensive stuff. So you can see here, we've got what I'm thinking is the lightest to heaviest from 10 ounces all the way up to 12. And again, 14 ounces. And then the last one shocked me that it was 17.1 ounces, pretty crazy. And here are the results of skimming off the layers. Now, the names of the plywoods, where they're from, and their prices are gonna be on screen. And I do wanna know what you guys think. Pretty awesome results. And there is a clear winner, for sure. And yeah, the nylon stuff was in the tiger ply, the plywood with the most layers and the craziest adhesive. And of course, this is the Baltic stuff. And I use this today, which has been 
awesome to make products with for sure. And this stuff here is, well, it's Baltic Birch that I can't get anymore. It's all kind of pale in color. It's really solid. It was the heaviest at the 17 ounces. And this stuff was from 2018 and it's just not available. All right, guys, the elephant in the room from the thumbnail, this stuff. This is a fibrous material. Uh, I was expecting to find this in the cheapest plywood, but I didn't. I found it in one that cost $96 a sheet. I found it in this stuff called Tiger Ply. Now, I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing. Um, I think it probably goes into the structure of being a little bit more rigid. Um, I have seen some quarter inch stuff that has like, looks like Bondo and a bunch of strings in it, like reeds. Um, <clears throat> that was years ago when I first started starting on the laser and it was, lasers wouldn't cut through it. Um, I'm not laser cutting three quarters of an inch material, so I don't think I have to worry about that. But I think it has to do with the stability, I'm really not sure. But either way, it's still good quality plywood. Um, now, American plywood, made here in the u.s is really tough to come by uh, at least here in my area a lot of it comes out of the pacific northwest i know there's a brand called apple ply which is probably going to be suggested to me a lot i've actually talked to them directly um they are not taking on at least at least at this time unless anybody knows any differently um what the representative told me is they're not taking on any other distributorships because they are at capacity they're busy enough um and basically all the all the distributors that are selling apple ply are basically located in the pacific northwest and the surrounding states and again i'm down here in florida it's not going to happen um, my plywood people can't even get a contract with them because it just doesn't exist they're just too busy um, and i know that the apple ply is a really premium product I've, I've heard some really good things about it but neither here nor there this was the test but i do have a dark horse winner and like i said in the beginning i thought it might be and it was this stuff right here it's only 39 bucks a sheet here in jacksonville um, i get it from hood distribution i'm gonna put a list of all of our major plywood dealers in jacksonville down below if you're from this area by all means give them a call and go support them because they are local businesses too so here's the deal this stuff is pretty light it's not as heavy as the baltic but it has the layering it's got about 11 layers instead of 13 but it's pretty it goes together well i don't see many voids and for 39 dollars a sheet instead of 100 bucks my goodness now here's the deal i'm not just going to go start using cheaper plywood okay i i i just prefer where's it at <laughs> I just prefer this Baltic stuff. It is so heavy. It is so great. Um, I have a reputation of putting cantilevered shelves. I want to show you all this. You see all that? That's kind of crazy over there. I don't know if you can tell. Those are cantilevered shelves full of plywood, okay? And they are held with my brackets on the wall. Hundreds of pounds are on one of those shelves. I know it. And because of the strength and the rigidity of the Baltic stuff, that's why I'm going to continue to use this. Um, I'll let you know if anything changes, of course. Um, but if you're going to get products from me, then they're going to be out of this Baltic stuff for the most part. There may be some changes. And again, I will communicate that. But yeah, it's pretty interesting to see what has happened in the plywood space over the last few years with the availability of what's here and what's not. You know, it's pretty crazy. So if you've been with me for a long time or even just a few weeks, it's no secret that I make a living selling products online. Um, I make things out of plywood and I make things out of plywood. Some laser cut, some CNC. The laser cut stuff is very, very cool. I, it's like magic how it all works. But I will say this, I started putting panels online. The, the really thin eighth of an inch Baltic that I was using, those are there, they're on the website. But we've got a little bit of an announcement that the quarter inch stuff, this stuff here, and it comes off beautifully, if you can see that. And there's no soot on any of this. I can put on my face. I hope I don't have anything on there. Probably not. Hope not. Uh, but yeah, it burns cleanly. It comes off like honey on the edges. It's great. I'm going to offer these 12 by 24 inch panels. You get six of them per sheet. And they're going to be the same price as the Baltic things as well. This stuff, I've had a lot of requests for people saying, I can't seem to find the two maple veneers with the solid Douglas fir core. Um, I got all this weird plywood with all these different layers. The laser doesn't work all that well with it. That stuff is amazing and it's on the website too. One more thing, I have never really had an Etsy presence. You guys know Etsy is a massive seller of handmade goods uh, or semi-handmade goods. And I have an Etsy store, but it's just got digital products on it now. The, the Etsy space is very different. I've been very fortunate to do direct to consumer first by leveraging a YouTube audience. Um, if you don't have a YouTube audience, you haven't worked to gain one up over the past six or seven years like I have, um, you know, 
Etsy's a great place. And so I figured I would try an Etsy store and put a few digital files. In fact, those digital files are less expensive on my Etsy store than they are on my direct-to-consumer site to kind of get things going. So I'm going to link my Etsy store down below if you want to check out the digital files. You can also go to my regular site. I know it's kind of crazy, two different sites. But this, these panels all work with the stuff there. So, and I, I do want to sell physical products on Etsy. I just think that the market on Etsy has to do with a little bit more of the the home organization instead of the shop organization. So I'm kind of challenging myself to come up with something, and I've already been working on it, um, and I'm probably going to launch on Etsy. Uh, not going to say I'm going to reinvent the French cleat, but I think I'm pretty close. Uh, so definitely go check out my store there. Um, I favored it. Is that how it works there? I would really appreciate that too. And uh, so be on the lookout for some physical goods to come to the Etsy store as well. All right, moving on. Well, so here we are. I might as well end the video here. And the fact that, yeah. Do you need help with something? Well, you're too late now, buddy. <laughs>